Today we're gonna to go look at how long of a barrel you can put on a gun and see what the speeds do. Everybody's done the cut down barrels, you know, say from 30 inches down to 16 inches. We're gonna go out past that 30 inches and we're gonna go all the way to six feet long and try and see if the, say a bullet slows down or a bullet speeds up uh, and what's actually gonna happen. That's not what I expected. With there being so many unknowns with a six foot long barrel, you know, attaching two barrels together, we didn't know what was gonna happen. Uh, so we took the gun, took the barrel to action out. There's not a 100% guarantee that we know this is safe. Uh, put it into a barrel vise on a table, because we just had no idea what was gonna happen. There were some people thought the bullet might get stuck. Some people thought it would just barely come out and would keyhole, you know, a target at 100 yards type of thing. So it was really, really hard to say exactly what was gonna happen. It did go at the end, so that seems to be good. Now that we knew it was safe to, to, uh, to shoot and the bullet was gonna make it at the end of the barrel, we figured, hey, let's go and uh, shoot some barricades with this thing, just to see how, how hard it would be to do it. I would have to definitely not recommend shooting this type of setup for competition. We are now gonna head out to the gun range and start doing our cut down test. Ryan approached me to build a really long barrel. Um, so I, I knew I could make a 36 inch 30 caliber barrel. I bored two and then I button rifled them and I had a local machine shop, a little bit custom to machine female threads in the primary barrel. And then I machined the male threads in the secondary barrel to fit, did a calculation so we could get time the rifling uh, with a bore scope and, it, and talk it down and it worked very successfully. So we reached out to our engineering team and they actually went and attached two forends onto the end of a standard ACC forend because we wanted to make sure we could get the bipod out far enough to balance the rifle and not have too much nose weight when we went to go shoot this. Uh, one of the other concerns was the amount of weight of that barrel. That barrel's 16 and a half pounds and having 16 and a half pounds on an action screw is not a great idea. We were concerned about the tenon and also the action screws. So we ended up having uh, a couple barrel blocks in there as well to support the barrel down further down. So I'm about 6'3", and as you can see, this is uh, pushing well past me. Uh, this ends up measuring out at 88 inches overall length. We're gonna start off the test by going and shooting uh, around 100 rounds through the barrel to try and get it broken in a bit, uh, to try and take away that factor of the barrel speeding up over time as we shoot more and more rounds through it. <laughs> You, most barrels you can see just fine. Too shiny? No, just like it's too darn long. <laughs> well, you get so many shadows come back, eh? Yeah. Reflections at the front. Oh, I think that's gonna be close, but we'll find out. So we're gonna use uh, some uh, Federal Gold Medal Match 175 Green Sierras. So pretty standard match ammunition out of this 308. So we did a quick uh, bore scope on this, and now we're gonna try and get it sighted in here. Once it's all sighted in, we're gonna go and take the speed. Uh, the box speed is saying 2,600 feet per second. Uh, so that's with like a 24 inch barrel. So we're gonna set our baseline off of that until we get down to 24 inches on this barrel. And then we'll reset that speed as our average speed there. I expect it's gonna slow down. How much is it gonna slow down? I don't know. Okay, that should be on paper. I'm gonna put two more down there just to get a group. Okay, got a little group down there. Go take a look at it. This is a five shot group here. Most of it, so four shots are in just over an inch, which I'm pretty impressed. And yeah, it's uh, set up ready to go now. So we're gonna go and start shooting some groups and get some speed. I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna be like 100 to 150 feet slower. I'm gonna say 2950. 2950, okay. Let's go hey, with that. how much fun is that? <laughs> <laughs> Rat, what's your guess? What was yours? Uh, mine's uh, like 2400. I'll say 26. 20, you think it's gonna be the same speed? Yeah. Okay, let's see what happens. Average 
average? Average speed, 27.85. I was closest. Yeah. <laughs> so if you go off the box ammo, that's saying that it actually increased in speed even at that distance, at that length. That's incredible. So that's not what I expected. I, the, anybody I talked to, like including some like very knowledgeable people, are like, it's going to slow down. The, the friction is going to build up to a point where it has to slow down. I think it sped up and then it slowed down. It slowed down. It, it very well could. So yeah. we're going to track it from here back yeah. uh, and see what happens. Uh, we, we don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the group down there was like an inch and a half again. So. noticed almost no change for a good part of the barrel cut down. Even after we got down to 58 inches of barrel length, it was had still only dropped 12 feet per second. So it was dropping very, very slowly. But it's kind of interesting, as we cut the barrel, it's actually shifting on where it's hitting left and right. Even on the next 20 inches of barrel length that we cut down, it was still only dropping around 20 feet per second per those 10 inches. Once we hit around the like 30 to 34 inch mark is when it really started dropping off in speed. And you started seeing that standard, you know, 15 feet per second per inch of barrel cut off. We're keeping our standard, deviation under, our standard deviation under, usually under eight actually, if not under five. We ended up finishing off at with a speed of 2567, and that is a difference of 211 feet per second from the longest point to the shortest point. The way that I generally look at barrel length though is kind of optimized for what you're using it for. So you're going hunting, you want a 24 inch barrel, you're going to shoot a PRS match, you got a 26 or 27 inch barrel, uh, you're gonna go shoot an F-class match, you got a 30 or 32 inch barrel. You know, each one of those is being used in a different situation. One has more movement than the other. You know, one's being shot prone. And then you get into, let's say, an ELR or like extreme long range with large calibers. And, you know, maybe you'll push it to a 36 inch barrels because you are trying to maximize that speed. It all comes down to utilizing the barrel length you need and understanding the, the load you have for that or the ammo you're buying for it.